Hello everyone out there in YouTube, Rumble, and uh, X-Land, X-Land out there. Uh, welcome back to Diego Noza, of course, I'm Diego. And I am here to give you a straight man's uh, commentary and review on some of the biggest pieces of shit that are out there and, and have been out there in the past, okay? Sorry. This is what I do here, okay? That's what I do here. I take your chick flicks and I rip them the fuck apart. I expose the bullshit. There's a lot of bullshit involved uh, in your favorite chick flicks, and that's what I fucking do here. Now, I started doing this because of uh, Sex in the City, okay? Because I uh, remember uh, two years ago when they came out with fucking and Just Like Crap, season one, you know, I got a little bit excited about that because I was a fan of Sex in the City. I was the only straight guy that I knew that actually watched every fucking episode of that show. It was bullshit. It took place in Lollipop Land. But it was entertaining, and that's why I enjoyed the show, you know, and I learned a lot of things from it, you know. Uh, so that, so when they announced they were going to uh, make a sequel series about the, them as old ladies now, well, they're already old back then, but even older, okay. I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. I want to see what happened to these characters, what happened to Big, what happened to Harry, uh, what happened to all, you know, Samantha and all this shit. Well, first of all, Samantha's gone. Uh, she ain't going to do this fucking show. Okay, because she hates uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and all that. Okay, we all know that feud. Okay, but um, I, I started uh, I started reviewing the episodes. Okay, because uh, it wasn't something that I'm used to doing. I don't typically watch that kind of shit. Okay, I, I like guy things. I like guy movies. You know, you give me a Die Hard or a Predator. You know, or a superhero movie like Avengers or some shit like that, dude. I'm I'm, I'm going to town, man. I love that shit. All right, I always have. I also have, love the action adventure genre. Give me a martial arts movie. Give me a military movie. You know, like a, a Saving Ryan's Privates or shit like that, you know? Yeah, that, that shit's fucking good. Okay, yeah, I, I messed up the name on purpose. All right? Uh, you know, stuff like that. Give me something like that. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm invested. I'm in it. You know, I like that stuff. Give me a chick flick, you know, then it, it, it better be fucking good. It better be good. I have seen some good chick flicks out there, but if it's not good, man, oh my God, I'm going to fall asleep, you know, or whatever. I'm just going to turn this shit off, all right? Uh, so it's not typically my genre, okay? But, you know, I've dated a lot of girls and, I, and I've watched a lot of fucking chick flicks and stuff. Not as many as you have, probably. But I've watched my fair share. And some of them are better than others, just like any other genre. Some 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 movies are good, some movies suck. Okay? And uh, so what I decided to do in between uh, reviewing uh, and just like shit, those episodes, okay, I decided that uh, the first thing I did after I reviewed that abortion uh, and just like crap season one is I uh, actually uh, reviewed every single fucking episode of Sex and the City. Every single one. Now, I rewatched them back in the day while I watched them again so that I could review the episodes. All those episodes are on this fucking channel. And then, of course, that piece of shit and just like crap, I just finished reviewing season two of that, of that fucking abortion, and now there's going to be a season three uh, once all the actors and writers come, come off their strike, which they're on right now. Hopefully it'll be written by AI. And it'll be a lot fucking better. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I just finished reviewing it and just like crap season two. But in between, I reviewed every fucking episode of Sex and City. And then I decided, well, what else am I going to do? Well, you know what I'll do? I'm just going to go down. I'm going to fucking rip apart your chick flicks. And I've seen my share of chick flicks. But there's a lot of them I have not seen. So I decided I was going to do that. I decided I was going to review your chick flicks. And just and if they're good, I'm going to tell you they're good. I'm not going to fucking bullshit here. I'm not here to destroy chick flicks as much as I am to give you a realistic uh, analysis of these chick flicks, all right? There's actually some that are pretty fucking good. And there's some that I've never seen before. And I reviewed those as well. Like, like, for example, Thelma and Louise. I had never seen that fucking movie. Every fucking girl I dated has seen that movie. They told me to watch it. I've never fucking seen it uh, until I decided I was going to review it last year. Okay? <laughs> so I watched it for the first time last year. And ladies... I know now why you love that movie so much. I get it. It's a good movie. It's really Scott, you know, at his best. You know, it, it's well acted. It was, uh, it was a great story. It was, it was heartbreaking. The story was really, the, the story underneath the story is fucking so tragic and hard. I, mean, I got, I got teary eyed. I, I'm getting misty eyed right now just thinking about that movie, you know? So now I get it. Now I know why all you girls love that movie so much. I get it now. I get it, okay? I'm a believer now. Okay? I get it. It was a good movie. It was a very good movie. Okay. But then there's the usual shit like The Notebook. Oh my God. That fucking, that big 
piece of fucking diarrhea. And then in Breakfast Like Tiffany's, yeah. Yeah, remember that Breakfast Like Tiffany's? Yeah, I reviewed that piece of shit too. Yes, it is a piece of shit. I don't give a fuck how good Audrey Hepburn is in it. It's a fucking piece of shit. You got one prostitute falls in love with another one. Are you out of your fucking mind? You think it's gonna fucking work? <laughs> Not only did I review that movie, I read the book too. <laughs> well, it was a short story actually. Written by a gay guy, of course it was. Uh, all these movies are written by fucking gay guys. All right, uh, a Dirty Dancing, yes, I reviewed that movie. Okay, I'd seen that one before, though. Okay, I reviewed that movie. It's a piece of shit, too. Uh, most of these movies are pieces of shit. And then I came out with a, what I thought was a good movie, uh, a very little-known little, little known movie uh, called Till There Was You. It came out in the late 90s. I watched it myself uh, when it first came out at the, at the base theater at Campbell's U, North Carolina, when I was stationed in the Marines. You know, I was lonely. I was broke. I was a private, so I had no fucking money. I had no fucking car. Okay, so I just walked to the base theater and watched the movie for free. And I watched this fucking movie, and I loved it. I loved it. It was a chick flick. Till There Was You with Gene Triplehorn and Dylan McDermott. Yes, yes, Julie Roberts' ex ex-boyfriend. Dylan McDermott, she cheated on him. Uh, with Keeper Sutherland, I think. But who, anyway, who cares? Uh, yeah, and, and Gene Triplehorn, who was, you know, Ben Stiller's uh, ex-girlfriend. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I watched that movie, Sarah Jessica Parker. That was the movie Sarah Jessica Parker did right before Sex and the City, before she got cast as Carrie Bradshaw. She did this movie, Till There Was You. And I love this movie. I thought it was a great fucking movie. Great fucking movie. I fell in love with it. It's one of those movies I used to show girls when they wanted to watch it. Oh, why don't you watch this one? I love this one, okay? And then I watched it again. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is not that good. It's not that fucking good. I understand now why it flopped at the box office. And only like like a fucking, a young, horny, broke, fucking uh, uh, private first class in the fucking Marines could fall in love with a fucking movie like this. All right? Because it was free. <laughs> okay? So sometimes I got to eat my own words. All right? Uh, but yes, yes. So I've seen some good ones. I've seen some bad ones. Again, I'm going to give you an honest review. But I'm going to give it to you from a straight guy's point of view. That's a point of view you never got when you watch this movie. Now, the movie we're going to talk about here today is Barbie. Like, that's the one that just came out a couple months ago, okay, with Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, okay, and Mr. fucking chick flick actor himself, Mr. fucking Ryan Gosling, all right, who I already reviewed him in the notebook. You know, and he fucking, the fucker does La La Land and shit, oh my God. Anyway, I'm not, should I review that movie? Who, who gives a fuck? Anyway, uh, so, uh, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to talk about Barbie here. Now, th there's a big controversy here. First of all, Barbie is is uh, easily the number one movie of 2023. Okay, it's approaching $1.5 billion, okay? Even Super Mario Brothers did not make that much money, okay? So it's already surpassed that. So right now, Barbie is the number one movie in the world. It's still playing in theaters, even though it came out two fucking months ago. Uh, they called it the Barbenheimer effect because Barbie and, and the Oppenheimer movie, an adult movie about the about the creation of the atomic bomb, the, the, the scientist that created the atomic bomb, okay, by Christopher Nolan, the very famous uh, director, uh, great director Christopher Nolan. Okay, both those movies came out on the same day. Okay, so they called it Barbenheimer, which is given like a fucking, like a social media thing. So everybody went to go see Barbie, then they went to go see Oppenheimer, okay? Now, obviously, Oppenheimer is the better movie, but it's not a chick flick, all right? Uh, but uh, I, have, I have kids in my family. I have a seven-year-old myself. So uh, eventually, I was going to have to watch Barbie, okay? Sorry, I was going to have to watch fucking Barbie. Uh, I watched Barbie. Uh, I thought it was a piece of shit. Like, I, I, it was actually worse than I thought it would be. I thought, I knew the girl power was all going to be there. I knew all that. Uh, but I had no idea that Ryan Gosling... Uh, was going to fucking uh, basically take fucking uh, human shit and rub it all over his body, you know, taste it and everything. You know, I never thought that he would do that in his career, you know, because when you when actors do that in their careers, they, they don't really recover from them. OK, I mean, look, look, look at Andy McDowell. OK, remember that movie she did with uh, Bruce Willis, Hudson Hawk. OK, she was primed to be an A-list actress. OK, a big time fucking movie star. But after uh, Hudson Hawk, there's a scene in that movie where she was like barking like a little dog <laughs> like that. OK, uh, a woman who wants to be an A-list actress. OK, and that 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 destroyed her career. She never recovered from that. She still worked after that, obviously, but her career never really recovered after that, okay, <clears throat> and uh, I never thought, so most, usually an actor who's, who's, on, who's on an upward trajectory, who's about to make it really big, who's one movie away from becoming a major superstar, okay, usually they don't do things like that because it ruins their brand, it ruins their image, okay, and, uh, and yeah, she, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, he did that, he did that, Ryan Gosling, uh, he, he fucking totally went 
the went, went towards the fucking self emasculation in this movie, and I hated that. Uh, I hated that about the, that the, he was sell out so much as to make himself look like a total fucking uh, dweeb. Okay, and I understand it's mostly women that watch his movies. Okay, but whatever guys were watching his movies that were straight, okay, he lost all of them right there. Okay, no more fucking Blade Runner movies for you, Ryan Gosling. The the men have turned their back on you, right? I'm sure the women still like him, but you know. So um, yeah, once you do that, you fucking his career suicide. Uh, but he went there. He went there. Okay, uh, he emasculated himself, made himself look like shit. Uh, pretty much everyone did. Everyone that, that had a penis in this movie, except for one, uh, did that. And we'll get to that. All right. Um, so I thought the movie was going to be nothing but misandry. And I was right. Uh, I, ben Shapiro reviewed this movie, and he said it's nothing but misandry. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz also said it's nothing but misandry. You know, a lot of people said that. Uh, there was this one YouTuber I follow named uh, As Heels Babyface. This fucker... Um, He's a he's a UK guy, UK YouTuber. Okay, I, I follow all of most of his videos, but he's a guy. I don't play video games. He's a gamer, but he actually uh, enjoyed the movie, which I thought he would not, because usually he hates woke shit like this. Uh, but he said that there was a double meaning there, uh, the subdivision. Okay, there's a meaning behind the meaning, and that actually the movie is actually based. It's actually very red pilled, which means that it actually makes fun of the fucking. Um, it makes fun of the wokeness that it has. It's so fucking far left. That it is actually a parody of itself. I didn't get that first time watching it, but I'm going to watch it again now so I can review this. Okay, all I saw was misandry, but they're saying things like, "Oh no, actually, uh, if you look at it in the movie, they actually um, they actually are making fun of themselves. The feminists are actually making fun of themselves." Okay, uh, they're saying they made up words like patriarchy and they make up things. Uh, to keep people separate instead of being together, that kind of thing. So we'll see as I review this movie. But he said it's actually based, it's actually anti-feminist. If you really read between the lines of everything that's happening in the movie, it's actually anti-feminist. Okay, it's against all the fucking bullshit wokeness uh, that, uh, that, that that the media is giving it all the praise for. Okay, like what the fuck? Are women living in caves or shit? And they, they can't come out without a man's permission? Get the fuck out of here. But this movie's going to make you think that that's the way it is in the real world. Okay, and no, it's not. No, it's not. All right. But that, that's the biggest problem I have with this movie. So I'm kind of divided as to do I hate this movie or is there really like like a good message here? Okay. So I'm going to look for that. I'm going to look for that message that uh, As Hills Babyface said is in this fucking movie. So that's my goal in this review. I'm going to try to see it from their point of view. Maybe I missed something the first time around. Maybe uh, uh, there is some uh, some pro-men uh, stuff in here that I just didn't catch it because I wasn't looking for it. I was so infused. I was so deep into my own fucking hatred of this movie and everything it stands for. And, and Greta Gerwig in, in particular that uh, I, I kind of might have missed it. So I'm going to watch it again so I can give you an accurate review. All right. But apparently there is some stuff in there, some pro-man stuff in there. I'm going to look for it real hard, okay? But I didn't see it the first time. We'll see if I see it the second time. All right. So the movie we're going to talk about is Barbie from 2023. This movie is directed by Greta Gerwig. Now, who the fuck is she? Who gives a fuck? Uh, who gives a fuck who the fuck she is? I don't, I don't care. Uh, she did some shit in fucking Hollywood. Uh, I'll give you a background on her later. But what I really want to talk about right now is I want to talk about the actual doll, uh, Barbie, Okay. Now, this movie makes a big deal uh, of showing you the creator of Barbie, Ruth Handler. She created Barbie in the 1940s or 1950s, okay? Uh, they give you this whole backstory about her. Like, uh, she, you know, she uh, she created Barbie, you know, they named it after her daughter, Barbara, blah, blah, blah. They show this old lady, like, you know, old Jewish woman, real Perlman, you know, who in real life is married to Danny DeVito, okay? Um, and she explains that what Barbie was and what it meant and what she was trying to do with it, okay? Well, first of all, that's all bullshit. Let me tell you about Barbie, okay? I'm going to tell you the truth about Barbie, okay? Uh, Ruth Handler did not create Barbie, okay? Uh, Barbie was created in 19, uh, in a comic strip, okay? A German comic strip in 1952, okay? It was called Build Lily, okay? Build Lily um, was a comic strip character, kind of like Blondie, uh, an American cart uh, comic strip from the 1920s and 1930s. They even made some movies of that in the 1930s. Blondie. Okay, there was a lot of comic strips that got turned into live action movies. Uh, some of the most famous ones like Popeye, Betty Boop, uh, Lil Abner. Okay, and, uh, and Blondie. Okay, Dick Tracy even. Okay, 1990. Okay, and Popeye in 1980. Okay, but uh, Little Orphan Annie also in 1980. Okay, these are all comic strips that were very popular in America. Okay, uh, and all over the world too. Okay, uh, the peanut. You know, trouble that was in the 50s. So. Okay, uh, these are comic strips from the 1920s, 1930s. A big section of the comics were, was called the funnies, and people used to read those, okay, to get their entertainment, their little jokes, okay. 
And some of these went off to become very, very popular. They actually made some live action uh, versions of this thing, like Dennis the Menace was another one. Okay, uh, they did this with Blondie. Now Blondie was a, was a comic strip from the 1930s. Uh, it was about this woman, this drop dead gorgeous woman. You know, she wore her hair up. Okay, she was married to a fucking nerdy husband named Dagwood. Okay, and she was basically ran the household. She was a housewife. That Dagwood was like this bumbling fucking idiot of a husband, and she was a smart, pretty one that everyone liked. Everyone, all the guys hit on her. You know, uh, she dropped dead fucking gorgeous, beautiful housewife. Loved her man, and Dagwood was the fucking the beta male idiot uh, provider who provided for the whole fucking family, even though he had no fucking courage, no self esteem, and a guy like him never would get a woman like Blondie in real fucking life. But that was the fucking joke, all right? Basically, uh, uh, modern day television now. Uh, uh, is what Blondie was in the 1930s. See, they did it first, you fucking feminists. They did it first. All right. Anyway, so uh, it was like that. It was like it was like the super good-looking girl. It was a comic strip, and basically, Bill Lilly, the comic strip. Okay, it was created by a guy named Reinhard uh, Buthin. I hope I said that right. It's a German name. Okay, and basically, in the comic strip from 1952, uh, this girl, uh, Bill Lilly, dropped a gorgeous blonde girl, walked around, and got hit on all the time. Uh, she was kind of a slut, you know, kind of flirting with men all the time. You know, it's just like a crazy, fucking, stupid ass cartoon. Is all it was. It was a comic strip, all right? But uh, in 1955. Okay, uh, they decided that because this comic strip was so popular, especially with girls, uh, they decided they would make a doll uh, on, the, on this comic strip character, okay, Bill Lilly. So in 1955, they released a doll called Bill Lilly. Okay, they released it in Germany, only in Germany. Okay, and it was very popular. Uh, little girls liked it a lot because you could change the outfits on her. Okay, so you got this beautiful doll, uh, Bill Lilly. You could change the outfits. So you could make her a nurse. You could make her a doctor. Whatever the fuck it was back then, all right? And it was very popular. And that came out in 1955. All right. Now, let's go back to America here, okay? In America, uh, uh, right before World War I, you had this woman named Ruth Handler and her husband, Elliot Handler, okay? And they decided they wanted to start a, a, a furniture business, okay? They started making furniture, all right? Uh, they also had another partner. Uh, his name was Harold Matson. okay? So you've got Harold Matson, M-A-T, and then you got uh, Elliot Handler, E-L. You, 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 you merge those names together, you get Mattel. So they created a company called Mattel, okay? The three of them did. Ruth Handler, Elliot Handler, her husband, and a guy named uh, Harold Matson, an, inv an investor, okay? So they created a company called Mattel to build furniture, okay? Well, when World War II happened after uh, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, um, basically the furniture industry went, went defunct, okay? Everything was promoted towards the war. So what they decided to do is they decided to make toy furniture instead. Okay, so in 1941, they switched the focus to toy furniture, okay? And that's how they kept the float during the war, all right? And there was a big market for that, apparently, to buy little fucking doll houses and shit like that. Okay, they were, they were cranking them out. Uh, so there was a the market for it, okay? They weren't that successful, but they made enough to, to keep going, all right? To stay in business, basically, all right? So uh, after the war ended, all that kind of shit happened, okay? Uh, Ruth Handler and her husband, Elliot, they decided to go on vacation in Germany. They went to Europe. On vacation okay uh, and they went to Germany and while they were there uh, Ruth noticed the Bill Lilly doll okay which had just been released uh, the year before okay and uh, her daughter uh, Barbara uh, loved it wanted one so she actually bought three of them she bought one for her daughter Barbara and she bought two more so she could bring back to America and study them okay and that's exactly what she did she brought back the Bill Lilly doll and she figured out, like, oh, you know, we're, I'm making, we make toy furniture. It's not much of a stretch to just make toys. Why don't we make a doll just like this, like Bill Lilly? Okay, we'll make a Bill Lilly doll. Okay, and we'll try it. So what she did is she went to the company. She went to uh, Reinhard Boothin, uh, the people that owned the Bill Lilly doll. And then she basically got a license. Said, I want to build my own version of the Bill Lilly doll in America. And I'm going to try to sell it. Okay, and we're going to be partners in this. So they, they gave her the license to do it. Okay, so she built her own version of the Bill Lilly doll in America. Okay, Ruth Handler did. Okay, she named it after her daughter, Barbara, Barbie. She called it Barbie. Okay, so she rebuilt the doll, made it more American, you know, blonde hair and all that kind of thing, you know, the, 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 the swimsuit and all that kind of shit. And she marketed that and she released that one uh, at this at some sort of a toy, uh, toy expo, okay, in uh, 1956, okay? So she released it. It was an immediate bestseller, 
Okay, girls all over America fucking fought for this fucking doll. This goddamn fucking Barbie doll. Okay, it became the number one fucking doll for little girls. Was by it was a huge fucking success. So so they just started cranking out fucking uh, Barbie dolls left and right. It was a huge success for Ruth Handler. Okay, it was so successful in fact uh, that by 1964, after making a shitload of money for herself, her husband, and their partner, uh, and and for um, uh, the company that owned the Bill Lilly doll, uh, that fucking Ruth Handler herself went to Germany. Uh, talked to the booth end people over there, the ones that created Bill Lilly, and they bought the rights to Bill Lilly so that no one, no one else could do that, all right? They actually bought the rights to Bill Lilly so that they were no longer copying Bill Lilly, okay? They owned Bill Lilly now, okay? So once they bought the rights to Bill Lilly, uh, they, uh, they canceled it. <laughs> they discontinued that doll so that they wouldn't have any competition, all right? Uh, and that's how that's how Bill Lilly ended, okay. And that's how they secured uh, uh, Barbie, okay, uh, for for the United States and the rest of the world. And then Barbie became the the official uh, pretty girl doll, okay, from now on, okay. So that that happened in 1964, okay. And like I said, uh, Ruth Handler called uh, the doll after her daughter Barbara, okay, uh, which premiered in 1959. That was when uh, Ruth Handler premiered the Barbie doll. And like I said, it was a big fucking hit. Uh, with girls all over America, all right? And that's what built the Mattel company. Now, later on, Mattel did other things, like they did He-Man and She-Ra, shit like that, all right? Uh, but what built the company, really, what kept it in business and, and had it flout, uh, uh, you know, had it fucking be so successful was the Barbie doll, okay, that Ruth Handler appropriated, okay, from Reinhard Buthen in Germany, the Bill Lilly doll, okay? So now you know. The movie didn't tell you this, but I told you this, all right? It's the fucking truth. Look it up, all right? So now the movie here, Barbie, okay? Well, it starts off with an homage, or you could say a ripoff, uh, to a movie by Stanley Kubrick called 2001. And I think that movie came out in 1969, okay? In the beginning of 2001, you see these fucking, these cro magnon men, these basically these cavemen, or Neanderthals, whatever, you know, back when human beings still kind of looked like monkeys and shit. And there's this big fucking uh, uh, rectangle cube in the sky and it breaks down and shit, you know, and you hear the dun, 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 all that kind of shit, right? Well, they do that again, okay? It's no homage to that. So apparently here we are in the desert. I'm guessing it's 1930 uh, based on the clothes. You see all these little girls out there playing with baby dolls and they're all dressed uh, in very faded out fucking clothes that look like they came from the 1920s, 1930s, okay? Uh, way before Barbie came out. But these little girls are all dressed that way on purpose. You know, I guess they're supposed to look like they're from the Great Depression or shit. Uh, who, who gives a fuck? I had the same problem with the fucking Hunger Games. You remember that? Uh, in the Hunger Games, uh, uh, what Katniss Everdeen, like like the, the, the village that she's from, okay? They're poor. They're, they have no money and they have no food. They're all starving. Well, the reason they're starving is because they spent all their fucking money buying antique furniture and antique photographs, okay? They had to buy, they had to, they had to fucking buy fucking, uh, um, what antique fucking, um, sewing machines and, and cameras and shit furniture. <laughs> That's why they went broke because everything there is from the 19 fucking 30s and it costs a lot of money to buy that shit. You want to get a phonograph from the 1920s? That shit costs fucking money. So that's why Candace Everdeen's fucking whole village is fucking broke. Uh, because they spent it all on fucking, on, on vintage fucking furniture. <clears throat> but anyway, <clears throat> so here we're out in the desert. You got all these little girls playing with these baby dolls. And all of a sudden Barbie shows up, okay? Margot Robbie looking good. She looks very good. Okay, pretty, smiling, you know. She better look good. Okay, she, she's maybe got another five years and then she's going to be replaced too. Just like all the leading ladies are. If they don't have a fucking uh, Oscar uh, hit or some shit. Anyway, but she's got one now, so we'll see what happens, all right? But her, the last three movies Margot Robbie did were flops. Okay, complete fucking flops. There was, what was it, Hollywood Land? No, no, it was called Babylon. Uh, there was one, another one called um, uh, Copenhagen, I think it was, or Amsterdam, wherever the fuck it was. Anyway, the last three movies she did, Birds of Prey, that was a big fucking flop. Okay, so, so her movies have not made a lot of money. Okay, she made a lot of shitty fucking movies. The Tanya Harding movie she made, I actually saw that movie. She looks nothing like Tanya Harding. Okay, and uh, she did a Tarzan movie like in 2016, which nobody saw that either. <laughs> she played Jane, you know. The Suicide Squad, I know, I know it was a popular movie, but nobody nobody watched it. Uh, they didn't watch either one. Okay, they, didn't, they did not. I don't want an Academy Award, but that was for costumes. Okay. <laughs> The 2016 Suicide Squad and the 2020 Suicide Squad, nobody fucking watched, okay? 
Or was it 2021 Suicide Squad? Yeah, nobody watched those movies, even though she starred in them, okay? Uh, I don't think really she's really that great of an actress. I think the best thing she ever fucking did was Wolf of Wall Street. She had a very small role in that, but that's the movie that put her on the map. Nobody ever fucking heard of her until Wolf of fucking Wall Street came out, all right? And then she became a big deal, even though she hadn't really proven herself yet. Any fucking pretty girl could have played Harley Quinn. It's not fucking difficult to imitate a fucking cartoon character, okay? So, no, to me, she doesn't really have that much talent. And here, she's just playing a dumb pretty girl. Basically playing the fucking, uh, what's her name, from fucking Legally Blonde, uh, Reese Witherspoon's character. So, it's not, it's not much of a stretch. It's not taking any sort of acting talent to play fucking Barbie. You're playing a goddamn fucking toy, okay? It's not difficult to play a fucking Barbie. You don't have to be a talented actress to play Barbie, all right? She's just pretty. And by pretty, I mean that she's attractive, but she's not sexy, you know? Okay, there's levels. There, there's cute, there's pretty, and there's sexy. Women want, want the girls to be pretty because that way they're pretty enough where you can be friends with them, you don't feel threatened by them, but they're not so fucking attractive uh, that you feel bad about yourself, you see? And she's not so unattractive uh, that, that you know, you, you really feel better than someone else, you get it? Okay, she's just right there in the middle, okay? She's a pretty girl, but there's better looking girls than Margot Robbie. But if only if you only watch this movie, you would you would never know that. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, so she's there. Helen Mirren, of course, Helen Mirren. Okay, the great Helen Mirren, another fucking old lady who's trying to act sexy now. They're trying. They're really. They've been trying for like 15 years now. You know, Helen Mirren's like in her 70s. Okay, but they've been trying to make her a fucking sexy grandma for a long fucking time. They need to give that shit up. I know she's a very likable woman. She's an old lady. She's fun. If you ever watch her interviews, she always makes fun of herself and other people. She has a great sense of humor and all that kind of stuff. But whenever they put her in movies, I mean, she's clearly in her 70s. And they try to make her look sexy like she's some hot old lady. And no, you're not. You're not, Helen Mary. You're not. You're just a British woman, okay? Eccentric British woman. You were hot back in the Excalibur, okay? Back when you were fucking Liam Neeson in the early 80s, okay? But that was a long fucking time. That was 40 years ago, okay? Time is you were hot in fucking uh, White Nights with uh, with Mikhail Baryshnikov, where you played his fucking Russian wife that he abandoned in the Soviet Union so he could fucking defect to fucking America. Okay, yeah, but that was a long time ago. Okay, uh, she did look good. She looked good back then, but that was a long time ago. Okay, uh, but they're trying, still trying to make her a thing. Anyway, she narrates this fucking movie, all right? Helen Mirren. Okay, what I want to know from here, Helen Mirren. She's married to the, I don't remember his name. But she's married to a director. He's the guy that directed this movie called Blood In, Blood Out. Okay, about the about the Latinos in East LA and the gangbangers there and shit. Anyway, he's a white guy, but he made a movie about us. Go figure, right? And I forgot his name, but I'll look it up for the next time. Anyway, uh, Helen Mirren, yeah, uh, she used to be with, she was with Liam Neeson for a long time. They were never married, but they were they were in a long term relationship for a long time. And uh, she she uh, what I really want to know is is it true, Helen Mirren? Is it true? Because I saw her recently in uh, in Shazam: Fury of the Gods. That's Shazam Part Two. She was the bad guy in that one. Okay, uh, is it true, Helen Mirren? Because she, she, she's been gone on public record saying that Liam Neeson has a very fucking big fucking cock. I'm talking like Milton Berle fucking Forrest Tucker size. <laughs> well, she left that out of this movie. Oh, well. Anyway, yeah. So Helen Mirren, uh, yeah, she's she's the narrator of this fucking movie. All right. So like I said, you got these nineteen these girls that are little girls dressed like it's nineteen thirties fucking Great Depression, okay? And they're smashing their fucking dolls to the two thousand and one uh, uh, music, okay? And of course, Margot Robbie arrives in her fucking zebra striped fucking bikini, puts on her sunglasses and smiles, her fucking red lips and shit, okay? And then we get a montage of Barbie, okay? Uh, it's all female empowerment bullshit. Okay, uh, women need Barbie to come out of the, to, uh, women, you know, need Barbie in order to come out of the fucking cave, uh, that men are forcing them to live in. Like, what the fuck, man? What, what year do you fucking think it is? Okay? Is there any man forcing any woman, uh, uh, to not go outside, to not be able to do anything? Well, yes, there is, but not in America. So where the fuck are you talking about? Take, this movie needs to play in the fucking China and the fucking Middle East, where they're really doing shit to women over there. In Africa. Not here. What the fuck are you talking about? All you fucking lesbian bitches, take this shit to fucking South America, okay, where they really need your help. Yeah, but you can't do that. I mean, you're not going to do that, though, are you? No, of course not. Of course not. All right? So uh, that's going on here, okay? You get a montage of all the Barbies, okay? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, they point out that, though, they point out the difference between Barbie world and the real world, okay? Which the truth is the real world in this movie is a lot faker than the Barbie world, all right? 
which is just as fake, all right? Okay, and of course, it's the typical fucking shit. You know, women uh, women can do anything uh, because Barbie can do anything, you know? I see the little girl playing with a Barbie, okay? So if, if she's playing with a, with a doctor Barbie, then that means that she's going to grow up and become a doctor, okay? If she's playing with a fucking uh, a president Barbie, that means she can grow up and become a fucking president, okay? And they got this fucking Michelle Obama fucking Barbie uh, doll there who's got the fucking president of the United States fucking slash over her chest, Okay, like 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 it's a fucking Miss America beauty pageant, right? And her says President of the United States on there. Okay, I guess so, so we can know that she's the president. Like what the fuck? Anyway, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, so if Barbie can do it, that means that all women can do it, right? Well, it's true, ladies. You can't do anything, okay, except fucking be Barbie. All right. Uh, so uh, all the problems of feminism and equal rights uh, have been solved uh, in Barbie Land thanks to Barbie. All right. <laughs> Well, I don't understand. How, how can there be feminism in Barbie Land if all the male men are subjugated to the women in Barbie Land? Then how the fuck? Why would the fuck would you need feminism? You're already in charge. You control everything. The men have no fucking rights. It's all it's all the girls. Men can't do shit. It's the women that do everything. So how the fuck would you need feminism there? Well, why are you screaming? Who are you fucking screaming at? Who's the enemy here? You've already subjugated all the men. So who the fuck is the enemy here? Who's fight? Who, who's challenging you on your beliefs? Nobody. Nobody. So why are you fighting? You know, anyway, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, of course, everything's pink. It's fucking Barbie land. Okay, Barbie pink uh, wakes up. Uh, so she wakes up from bed to some fucking bullshit female empowerment song, empowerment song, you know, the typical fucking Taylor Swift, fucking Kelly Clarkson bullshit. Okay. Uh, Barbie takes, uh, takes out their own trash. Yeah. You actually see Barbie take out their own fucking trash. Oh my God. It says Barbie land. Okay. Everything is fake in Barbie land. Um, but she goes through the motions anyway. Hence she takes her shower and it feels good. You know, there's no water coming out. She drinks her milk, even though they're fucking, the carton is empty, you know, <laughs> she, she makes her toast, even though she doesn't actually fucking eat it, you know, that kind of shit, okay. Um, one good thing I will say about the scene here is that all the Barbies do look very feminine, okay, which is good because you don't really see too much of that in movies anymore, okay, not, not in pop culture movies, okay, all the Barbies are wearing dresses, they're wearing skirts, okay, they got makeup on, they got their hair done, okay, they look very feminine, they're all wearing heels, Okay, uh, they look very feminine. And I actually like that about the movie. There's nothing wrong with girls looking like fucking girls. I, I know it's against the narrative. Maybe this is what uh, Ass Heels Babyface was talking about when he was saying it was based. It's because they're at, they're actually Barbie World is actually promoting women to look like women, which you don't see that too much in the real world. Okay, at least not in America, not not in the Western part of the world. Okay, where uh, women are actually allowed uh, to look like women. You know, it's, it's frowned upon now in the media. You know, women got to be boss bitches, okay? They got to wear fucking uh, their Doc Martin, Martin combat boots. They got to wear plaid. They got to wear fucking, you know, all sorts of shit. They got to look like men. The only real women are the ones that look like men. Okay, act like men. Talk like men. Fuck like men. Okay, drink like men. You see what I mean? Get tattoos like men, okay? Uh, that's what's promoted in the real world, Okay. Uh, which is just by way, which is just as fake as, as this world, okay? Uh, but to see a whole bunch of women, you know, with no tattoos, you know, looking like women, acting like women, talking like women, you know, it's refreshing because you don't see too much of that anymore, all right? So I thought that was kind of like, a, whoa, if you're trying to make women act like men, why why are they all acting like women here, you know? So I thought that was kind of cool, all right? So all, all the Barbies are very feminine. I actually did enjoy that. Okay, and the men are not are not masculine, but the girls are feminine. All right, uh, so you got pre, you got they, they showcase pregnant Barbie for a second. Her name is Midge. Okay, and Helen Mirren narrates uh, that she was discontinued. Midge was discontinued because having a pregnant Barbie is just too fucking weird. Okay, even though Barbie says hello to pregnant Barbie Midge, uh, it's too fucking weird. So they don't focus any more attention on that character anymore for the rest of the fucking movie. That's too weird. Okay. Let me tell you something, you fucking idiots. There's a fucking Barbie in this fucking movie that has a fucking cock. A cock. And that one we see all the fucking time. That's not too weird. But a Barbie that has a baby in her stomach, that's too fucking weird. See what I'm talking about? All right. So, uh, pregnant, yeah, pregnant Barbie Midge. Never see her again, okay? Uh, Barbie, uh, goes in her Barbie mobile, the pink fucking, uh, you know, uh, 
what do you call it, the pink convertible that we all see her in. Okay, we got female construction workers there doing no construction work. Okay, you got the president, Barbie, like I said, the Michelle Obama Barbie. Okay, where's the beauty queen sash that says she's the president? Okay, uh, apparently uh, we've got Nobel Prize Barbies there. They win Nobel Prizes. How the fuck does that happen when Alfred Nobel was a fucking man? How, 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 do, how do Barbies win Nobel Prizes when no, Alfred Nobel was a fucking man? So that would mean you'd be accepting a, a prize from a man, which means that he has some sort of authority to hand out a prize to a woman. But we've already established that no men in Barbie land have an authority, have any sort of authority or agency. So how is that fucking possible? See, this movie contradicts itself. How can you win a Nobel Prize when there is no fucking Alfred Nobel? You see what I mean? Okay. Who invented dynamite also, by the way, not just the Nobel Prize. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because Alfred Nobel was a guy. All right, and they give, they give each other awards just for existing. Isn't that awesome? Women, they just give each other awards just because they exist. You know, wow, wow. I'm kind of wishing, uh, me as a man, I'm kind of wishing we had our own fucking world. You know, uh, where we just give each other fucking uh, awards, you know, and trophies shit just for fucking uh, being born with a cock. Yeah, but no, no, no. I guess that's too far out. That's too weird, isn't it? All right. Uh, so Fat Barbie's there. Okay, we see Fat Barbie there. I guess we're in a courtroom, a Barbie courtroom. All right, yeah, and Fat Barbie there is arguing something all passionate and angry, you know, all feminist and shit, you know. She says, like, I have no difficulty holding logic and feelings at the same time. And it does not diminish my powers. It expands them. Yeah, written by a fucking feminist, right? She says that, of course, all the bar ah! feminist, feminist fucking, uh, uh, rhetoric here okay but here's the question i have in that scene where fat barbie is saying that who the fuck is she saying that to she now clearly she's a lawyer okay and she's making her an argument a passionate speech that we've all seen in legal dramas okay and usually whenever this happens on a regular tv show the lawyer is screaming at the fucking judge whoever's in charge of this fucking courtroom okay but we never see who she's screaming at we just see her yelling that, that she is capable of maintaining her feelings and her thoughts at the same time. And that it actually doesn't make her look weak. It makes her stronger. It, 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 it enhances her powers. So she's got fucking powers. Now, what kind of fuck, the only power you have, okay, uh, you fucking fat bitch, is your, your inability uh, to avoid the fucking buffet. Okay? Uh, that's the only power you fucking have. Okay? But she's yelling, okay, th th this rhetoric, this feminist rhetoric at who? We never see who she's yelling at. We never see who she's making this argument towards, okay? We never see it. But if there was somebody there, my best guess would be she's yelling at a fucking man who is the judge in the courtroom. And she's putting him in his place for assuming that because she has a vagina, that she cannot manage her own feelings and her own logical thoughts at the same time, okay? So we're supposed to assume that's who she's yelling at, the judge. That, that, that assumed that because she's a woman, she can't do her job professionally. But we've already established that there are no men in authority in Barbie land. Which means that no man would ever be in charge of a fucking courtroom in Barbie land. Which means that the person she's yelling at is another fucking Barbie. Which means that Barbies and other Barbies don't necessarily get along with each other. Okay? Which cannot happen in Barbie land. You cannot have Barbies going. The whole point is we're against the men. Hence, we have to be for each other. That's why they keep fucking giving each other pep talks. That's why they're always congratulating each other. That's why they're always like, you know, praising each other. It's because they have to be united against the men. Because the men are the enemy. The men are the ones they have to attack. You see what I mean? But they've already established that there are, there are no men in charge in Barbie land. So who the fuck does she have to give this passionate feminist speech to? She could only do it to another woman. But like I said, that would be her attacking another woman, and we can't have that in the movie. Hence, we don't see who she's yelling at. I guess we just have to assume that it's a man, a judge who's a man. But we already, we already established that there are no men that are in charge. So there can't be a man in charge of that courtroom. So why the fuck would she have to give this feminist speech to another fucking woman? Makes no fucking sense. See what I mean? That's the kind of bullshit this movie pulls out pulls out of its ass, all right? Yeah, it just doesn't work, man. It doesn't work, all right? 
Okay, I'm going to stop my review right here, but I'll be back shortly to continue my review of the 2023 Barbie piece of shit movie. I thank you very much for watching this long, and I'll see you soon on the next one.